Good morning, everyone. Sean Ruggiero. This is Family First Life's AMS, Advanced Market Sales. Thanks for watching us today on Facebook, or if you're watching this later as a recording, thank you. Uh, we try to keep it educational, beneficial, and moving along. Um, we have some good guests today, some good information to cover, but want to start with a, a reminder. We're roughly at halftime, okay? Halftime of the year, 2019. That's the month that we're entering into. And it's important to remember that because if you think about this as a game, this is something where we got to keep scoring, got to keep applying. We are ahead of the pace last year, but we can't be satisfied with that. That pace has to be something that we're looking for, our accomplishment of goals this year and our long-term goals. What are our three-year goals? What are our 10-year goals? And when I think of that, I think of that for a good reason. I think of that because this is something that is your career. If you're not doing this to seriously pursue this as your career, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. But like most of you, you're in this because you believe in it and you know you can succeed. So how long is your career gonna be? This is half time of one year, but we've got a few years left to go. Set those goals, stay motivated, stay helpful, stay humble. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later and know that you can reach those goals. And if you're behind, ask the person who's succeeding what you need to do to find that success. So, uh, first guest we have today is a gentleman, Nick Ayala. I had the pleasure of meeting him and his wife in Las Vegas. Very impressed with him, impressed with how he approaches the annuity game, the fixed index annuities, and the growth that he's seen with Priority Life under Family First Life uh, through 2019. So, uh, Nick, take it from here. Hey, Sean, thanks. And uh, man, I really appreciate you having me on today. Um, I'm really looking forward to spend the next 20 minutes or so uh, talking about FIAs and how we can help protect and make people money. Uh, it's one of my passions. I graduated with a finance degree. Um, I love helping people and talking about, the, about money. Um, I know in our culture, in our society, talking about money is looked down upon. And for me, I think that's kind of crazy because we live on this economic planet where everything kind of revolves around the subject of money. So why not talk about it? And we as agents have such a, an amazing responsibility and opportunity to help people um, protect their assets while also still having beautiful and amazing growth um, with their money. So. I hope these next few minutes that we spend, someone will get out of it, something, someone will get something out of it. Um, whether they're brand new or whether they're seasoned, hopefully they can find something that they can take. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to find annuities in a house, uh, quest, the right questions to ask to, to get to those annuities. Um, we're gonna talk about the power of an FIA and what it really can do for people. We're gonna talk a little bit about the market uh, briefly as well, because that's one of my specialties. Um, I'm very involved in the market. I have been for a long time, hedge funds and, and trading wise. So I'm very um, technical analysis, so to speak, is something I'm very um, brushed up on and I use on a daily basis. So hopefully I can help some people in some ways here. The first thing I kinda of wanna to touch upon is our responsibility as agents when we're looking at people's money. Um, we all remember the crisis of 08. And I bring that up because it's, it's the most recent major crisis. Um, and we all know people, whether it's moms, dads, uncles, aunts, grandmothers, grandfathers, whoever it may be that were hit hard by that crisis. And I think if we, when we walk into a house and we try to find and, and, and discover where their money is to help them with protection, to help them with an annuity, instead of going in with it with thinking of how it can affect me and my bank account, because annuities pay very well, if we can go with the objective of helping them protect their life savings. Because remember, the money that these people have, they've been saving their whole life. We're dealing with middle America and an FIA, a fixed index annuity, there's really nothing better for them, um, especially in the age bracket and the market that we deal with. Um, so we're gonna go into a little bit of that, guys, and I hope that you understand that if you can go into a house truly trying to protect somebody, protect their money, and help them in every way, you are going to come out on top, and yes, your bank account will be affected in a very positive way. Um, so the first thing, let's talk about that 2008 crisis, 2007 to 2009. It was the worst, um, crisis since the Great Depression. Um, we all 
how to remember what families went through. People still to this day, uh, um, 10, 11 years later, are still trying to recover um, from the devastation that happened to so many people. People's IRAs and 401ks were wiped dry. Um, 8.8 million jobs were lost in that time frame from 07 to 09. 8.8 million jobs gone. And I think what's even more concerning for me is when you look at the statistics, there was $19.2 trillion of household income wealth that was lost in between those three years, from 07 to 09. Now that statistic, 19.2 trillion, is based off of monetary value of 2011. Meaning, if you take that monetary value of 2011 and turn it into today's dollars, you're talking a lot more money was lost. But 19.2 trillion dollars was lost. And so when you start talking about this and bringing it up, it hits people pretty hard. So to put things into perspective, because I don't think a lot of people really understand how much $19.2 trillion is, you know, millions, billions, and trillions that gets thrown around all the time now in society. And, and a lot of you may have seen this before, but if you haven't, it should be eye-opening. So it would take 12 days for a million seconds to pass. So we're gonna translate seconds and time into money. So for 12 days will be about a million seconds, okay? For one billion seconds to pass would be about 31 and a half or 31.7 years, which is a pretty long time, so that's a billion. Big disparity between a million and a billion. But what's really crazy is you talk about a trillion. One trillion seconds would be about 31,709 years of time. So now that's a huge disparity between the billion and a trillion. So if you add that up and you talk about $19.2 trillion were lost in a three year window, which is not that long, $19.2 trillion, that equates to approximately 602,486 years. That's incredible. And so we have a huge responsibility and opportunity to really help people protect what's important to them. And that's their life savings, and that's their family, and that's their money. So we should talk about it more, we should train about it more, and we should really work to help as many people as we can when it comes to fixed index annuities and protecting their money. So quickly, let's talk about how to find the money in the home. So most, most people, they have their money in a few different asset classes, whether it's an IRA, a 401k, a CD, savings accounts, mutual funds, or index funds. Their money's in one of those asset classes for the most part. So we have to find a way to discover that money. When we're walking through the financial inventory sheet, if you guys are not using it, make sure you start using the financial inventory sheet. If you don't have it, please talk to your manager and they will get you a financial inventory sheet. There's a few different versions of it. I would say use the version that your manager suggests you use, um, but you need to be using the financial inventory sheet. It will help you discover where their money is parked. Now, we've all heard of the golden question. You know, do you have anything that acts like life insurance? Whether it's life insurance itself, 401ks, IRAs, CDs, mutual funds, index funds, anything like that. But a lot of times, agents, when they ask that question, they get a blank stare. Because when we walk into a house as an insurance agent, and now all of a sudden we're asking them about their financials, sometimes they kind of back away or tend not to want to tell you, uh, which is understandable from their point of view. So. I had, a, I had a conversation with um, John Gavin, and he's incredible at what he does, especially with, with annuities. And he takes this question and just kind of puts a, a, a slight twist on it. And I think that if, if all of you can, can, un, can see what he does, um, it would help uncover a lot more money. So the way he words it is, do you have anything that acts like life insurance that is transferable upon your death. And then you can take it one step further and say things such as an IRA, mutual fund, CD, 401k, and whatnot. But anything that's transferable 
upon your death. So what that does is it makes them think life insurance. I'm here for a life insurance appointment, whether it's filing expense or mortgage, and now I'm saying transferable upon death. I need to know what you have that's transferable upon your death that acts like life insurance. So now it helps us open up this window easier in the client's eyes for them to tell us where their money is. So I hope you can take something out of that because if you can, if you can start asking the question like that, I guarantee you, you will start uncovering a lot more money and where their money is parked. And that's step number one. How do I find the money? Now, if we're in a life insurance appointment, mortgage, final expense, whatever it is, once we find out where that money is, we're not harping on it. We're just gonna keep going. We're gonna kind of not pay attention to it and work on getting that life sale. As soon as we're done with that life sale, then we can say, hey, remember that $100,000 you had in a 401k? You know, what if I could show you something that will show you that you can never ever lose money, ever. That's the one guarantee, we can never lose money. You're protected. You will participate in upsides of the market and you can guarantee yourself a lifetime stream of income. Is that something that could interest you? And most of the time, people are gonna say yes. Because if the one thing you have to understand about a 401k, IRA, CD, mutual fund, uh, index fund, and all these other assets is they only make money one way. And that's when the market's going up. So if the market's going sideways or down, they're losing money. And not only are they losing money in their principal, but they're also losing money on fees because there's tons of fees in those asset classes. Three to 4% in a lot of them that these people don't even understand or know about. You know, it's like saying, if I have my financial advisor and we're losing money right now in the market, I'm literally paying him to lose me money because he's also getting fees on top of the principal that I'm losing. So we're able to show somebody something that will guarantee them uh, uh, that they can never lose money. There are no fees in FIAs because the company makes money with us in an FIA as a client. These clients jump out of their seats and all you have to do is grab a statement, whether it's a 401k, IRA statement, a CD statement, a savings account statement, and then go ahead and submit it to ask a specialist to help you from there. Set another appointment and get back in the house and, and call your manager. So under uh, uh, finding that money, uncovering where that money is, is number one. And I think John Gavin says it the best. Do you have anything that acts like life insurance that is transferable upon your death? So I hope that helps you guys write that down. So I'm gonna talk about five quick reasons why a fixed index annuity is perfect and right for our target market, middle America. The first thing is, once again, your principal is secure, and that's huge. No matter what the market's doing volatility-wise, investors will not lose their principal in an FIA. They're not susceptible to market risk. So in other words, when the market's going down, 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 and it looks like it should be going down soon, and we're gonna talk about that in a second, Clients in an FIA don't have to worry about that. Clients in an FIA actually like volatility. We actually want volatility if you're in an FIA because when the market's going down and we're not losing money, we're still staying at our high water mark. So when the market starts turning back up, well, guess what? We start here while people in IRAs are starting down here because they lost so much principal. So that's number one, your principal secure. The people that we deal with in the age bracket that we have they don't have time to make up for lost principal. They're either on fixed incomes, social security, or they have a job that's not paying them much money. They can't afford to lose what they have. It needs to, it needs to last them a lifetime. And in a 401k and IRA, it's not going to. So we have the ability to help them. So principal is secure. Number one, I wanna talk a little bit about why right now is the best time for people to be in an in a, uh, IRA, I'm sorry, in a, in a fixed index annuity and get out of their IRA. Um, you've probably heard a lot of people talk about this 10 year bull run that we're on right now. And it's true, we're on a huge bull run. And so right now people are excited and they're saying their, their, their financial advisors are doing great for them, but really they're not, they're just riding the wave of the market. But I don't think let many people show you um, what this bull market looks like. So here I'm showing you, if you take a look at that top graph, that's called a candlestick chart. 
And when you're talking about technical analysis, that's what most traders, uh, hedge funds, um, managers, and, and things use to, to look at the overall market. This is a graph, uh, this is a chart of the ES, which is the S&P in the futures market. So this is basically the S&P, or it is the S&P, just in the futures market. And what you're gonna see here is in 2008, you can see the dip that we had. That was the crisis. Um, and from that point on till now, you can see this huge bull market that we've had. Very little volatility, just in a few times. We had some volatility during the election year of 2016. Um, and now we're seeing a lot of volatility here. And this is where I wanna switch over. So if you look at the bottom graph where I zoomed in a little bit, there is a very interesting pattern taking place. And you can show this to your client and I'm gonna to try to break this down as easily as possible because we can get very technical about it, but as easily as possible. Something has been forming and I've been talking about it a lot to people. Um, over the past few months, a lot of different reversal patterns have been performing on smaller time frames, such as weekly charts, daily charts. This here is a monthly chart. So every single one of those pieces, they're called candles, whether they're green or red, is basically represents one month of trading or one month of the market. If you take a look, I marked that it has a double top. Now this is on a monthly chart. It's already been doing this on weekly and daily charts for quite some time. But now we're in higher time frames and it's happening. This double top is a huge reversal pattern. Because we didn't make another high, the market looks like it could be starting to take a fall. Now, you see I have something marked as the middle. Well, in a double top pattern, also called a Batman pattern sometimes, typically what happens is it breaks the middle. So if we break that middle, you can see the fall that we're, gonna, we're going to incur here looks like very soon. There's also some other patterns here that I'm not gonna point out, um, but they're very concerning when it comes to reversal patterns. Now, markets also love symmetry. And what I mean by that is you see a big up run, you see some volatility, and most likely you're gonna see that big downturn to, to, to make that symmetry on the other side. Um, and that's what happens a lot. But what you can point out the most to people if you want to is this double topping pattern. If you research for yourself a little bit what a double top does and looks like, it always breaks the middle. Take a look at it for yourself, do some research, because you can show your clients this. It'll help you seem very knowledgeable um, and then you can grab a statement, get out of the house, and go submit the information to ask a specialist. I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions, uh, reach out to me on that. Um, the next piece is tax deferred growth. So FIAs offer a long-term tax deferred savings, which is huge. As long as the money's staying inside that annuity, um, it will not be taxed on the earnings. And then once the, they pull the money out, this is to me what's so big, when they pull the money out, the money's taxed as ordinary income. It is not taxed as capital gains tax. In other words, it's taxed at a much lower rate, where if they're in the market and they are uh, uh, gaining, all of those gains are now being taxed as capital gains tax. So this is huge when it comes to pulling out money for people of this age bracket. So that would be number two, tax deferred growth inside that FIA. Number three, a guaranteed stream of lifetime income. I'm sorry guys, when you tell people this, what if we can take your 200,000 and guarantee you X amount of money for the rest of your life no matter what the market does. If the market went down every day the rest of your life, you're still guaranteed this amount of money. Most people, they cannot say no to that. Because remember, most of the people that we're dealing with are living on a fixed budget they're living on unlimited income, and if you could say, hey, I can guarantee you this much income for the rest of your life every year, how's that sound? They're going, they're going to at least take a look at what you have to say. So a guaranteed stream of lifetime income is huge when it comes to an FIA. Number four, it satisfies the required minimum distributions, your RMDs. If, when we're talking about qualified money, which is what most of the money you're going to find, because they're going to be inside some type of IRA, as long as it's not a Roth, but of an IRA, a CD, a mutual fund, whatever it's in, a lot, most of the time it's qualified money. And if it's qualified money, they have to start taking their RMDs out at 70 and a half, no matter what. We can't control that, that's the IRS. But if they don't do this, and a lot of times they don't because they just don't realize it, they're gonna get taxed heavily. So with 
an FIA, you can build it into the illustrations that shows what percentage they need to take out every year for their RMDs. And that will be also included as income for them. So it's absolutely fantastic. It will be built into the illustrations and makes it easy for them and it satisfies the IRS's obligation to take out those RMDs. So satisfying the required minimum distribution, it's huge. Um, the next thing, probate free inheritance. This is big for a lot of clients and I think most people don't touch on this enough when selling an IR, uh, I'm sorry, when selling a fixed index annuity and, and you definitely need to. Um, probate's a pain in the butt and, and it was established to help protect people, which it does, but also it gets in the way a lot of times and people don't get their money in time, the family does not. What's great about an FIA is it eliminates the probate process. You don't have to worry about your money being going, going through probate, it's going straight to your beneficiaries and they're going to get the money. So make sure you're hitting on that because it's extremely important. Lastly, before I take up too much time here, I wanna talk about the secret and it's very simple. You have to find the real why when we sell life insurance, but the real why when you're looking at an annuity is not for you as the agent to make money. If you make the real why about the client protecting their lifetime savings, I promise you, it will make it so much easier for you to sell annuities and find annuities instead of worrying about that commission check because the commission checks on the FIAs are beautiful. They're awesome for us, especially with Family First Life's new commission schedule for annuities. They're absolutely incredible how much money you can make for your family. But if you can forget about your commission check and you can open the door to compassion, to actually helping somebody protect their retirement savings, I promise you that will come across to the client. You will sell and find more annuities, which will in turn help more people, not only that client, but their family, and in turn help yourself and your family. That to me is the biggest secret of, of selling and presenting annuities to people. I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions about any of this, please reach out to me. If you don't have my number, get it from your manager. I love talking about this stuff. I look forward to, be on, uh, to being on this sh uh, show again. Sean, thanks again. Guys, keep killing it, 2019, all in. Let's keep rocking, thanks. Welcome to AMS Live on Facebook. I have the weekly numbers for you here. Week 20 of IULs, issue paid, we have John M with 404, Ross R with 1,659, Shoeb M with 2,780, Brig G with 1,873, Marquetta S with 372, Bradley A with 531, Daniel L with 3,685, Israel W with 3,848, Marcus R with 988. That was for week 20. Good job, guys. Um, issue paid annuities from May 9th to May 15th. We have Nadine L with 145,324. Selena M with 137,819, Jeffrey E with 115,589, Phil R with 85,744, Monica L with 85,000, Jordan D with 69,205, Ray D was 65,186, Douglas H was 62,185, John D with 57,000, Gregory M with 50,000, Brad A with 50,000, Ray D again with $43,043, James F with 41,237, Jack Y 38,998, Nadine L again with 35,410, 
Jeffrey E. with 32,801. Tim K. with 29,613. Mark K. with 20,000. Todd S. with 18,515. Linda L. with 17,689. Jeffrey E. again here with 14,507. And Danielle B. with 11,156 for a total of 1.226 million. Um, great job, everybody. The thing I like about that leaderboard is there are a lot of names on there. And so while the volume wasn't as high as our normal weekly around 2 million, um, the, the number of names and number of policies that issued mean there's a lot of volume and a lot of annuities being written. So good job. Um, looking forward to seeing that grow over and over again throughout the rest of the year. So I just have one thing for you today. I wanted to point out um, the new getting started guide that I had previously discussed would be coming live on AMS. So if you log into your profile, on FFL AMS over here on the right hand side of the screen is the getting started. If you click that here, it'll lead you to this page and this is a five step tutorial basically on getting started for writing your first annuity. So step one there is getting contracted and certified. Step two is logging into the AMS and getting educated. Step three is submitting a scenario. Step four, completing an application. And then step five is uh, processing the application, what to expect. So each of these is just a short um, three to five minute video on that step specifically. Uh, the nice thing about these is you can uh, start sharing these with your agents. So step one, for example, is getting contracted. Well, if they're already on the AMS site, they're probably already contracted because they needed an agent number to get in here. So you can simply come here to your AMS and share these with your agents. Um, in the right hand, I'm on an iPad today, so uh, the right hand here is the share screen with copy. Um, if you're on a computer, you can just simply right click on the video and copy the URL and it will lead you to um, the host site where you can actually save that link and blast these out to your agents. So like I said, it's just a quick five-step guide on getting started. Um, very broken down each step of the process. I tried to be thorough, so please uh, let me know feedback if there's anything additional that you think would be helpful for you and your agents. Um, this is really just a quick start guide, what things you need to do to be able to write your first annuity and get paid on that business. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks, we'll see you next week. Hello, my name is Nadine Lajoie with Family First Life. Uh, I want to thank you, Sean Ruggiero, Matt Smith, for your video on annuity. I cannot tell you how many times I listen to them, listen to your training, all of them, and every trainer that we have every week. It's pretty amazing. Also, a, a big thanks to uh, Jack, you, uh, Bridget, Atin, who answered a lot of my questions. Took me a while to prepare my first annuity. I was pretty stressed out because that was over half a million for my first one. So that was a 500,008 uh, and, and some dollars. And finally, yesterday I got all the money into, uh, into a teen. So all the money is transferred. I just, just waiting for my checks, which would be something around $27,000. So I'm really excited about that. So this lead was an old lead from Jack who gave to me probably in October, November. I started with Family First Life in September. Um, I was a next financial planner in Montreal for 20 years. I semi-retired at the age of 36. So of course, I kind of use all my story to build credibility with the client. But what I want to share with you is one of my favorite tool, especially at a restaurant and high-end clientele, doing the financial inventory at the beginning is not necessarily the, the best thing. I think uh, I built relationship, talk with the guy, he's a mortgage broker, mortgage lender, harmony lender, uh, all kind of stuff. So the guy is really uh, savvy. So if I just do the financial inventory, I, I don't think it's it's good enough. So I show him that uh, graphic. Uh, what I say is that when you protect your family, usually this is the first thing, all kind of insurance, uh, life insurance, mortgage insurance, burial, uh, health insurance, dental insurance, group insurance. I can do all kind of insurance. But the problem is most of the people, that's only what they do. But me, because of my experience or because of FFL or because of the of the training that we got uh, and, and the expert that we got in our company, we have other stuff that a lot of people, they don't talk about. 
grow your money tax free. It's one of the second goal of my client. Once you grow your money tax free, when you retire, you want your money a profit for you and also to be secure. So I'm talking about safe money retirement. And the last one is legacy live a legacy so the difference between me and other other uh, rep or agents is really that we will focus and i will be able to help you out in everything in your finance and more with the contacts we have at ffl so once i do that in between my bites of my uh, english mcmuffin something or whatever I'm designing also the tax-free saving strategy, okay? So this is this one here, and uh, that's to say, this one is for the IUL. Everything you get in, it's tax-free. Uh, everything you get out is tax-free, and when the market goes up, you go up. When the market goes down, you never go down, and I designed that little tool here. So when I talk to safe money retirement, I talk about the safe money retirement here, right? Hopefully you see well, okay? I said it's a little bit the same principle, but a little different, right? Let's say you put $100,000 in it with the new product with Agility since uh, last year, you can get a 25% bonus right off the bat. So you are talking to me about the legacy you wanted to leave. This is the product I would suggest to you. And every year when you do, um, when you make a return on investment ROI, of course I say ROI all the time because the client knows what is ROI. And uh, you get an, an extra 175% out of it. So your $100,000, let's say you transfer $100,000 with me, you get 125 right off the bat for your, um, for your kids. And also, you told me that you don't want your kid to spend your money right away, right? No, no, I don't want that. They have already enough money. I have already so much money everywhere. I don't want to dilapidate that money. I said, do you know that we can restrict the payout of that with uh, agility if they take the 125 plus 175 percent ROI every year? If you take that column and I show them the column of the debt benefit, if, you, if they do that for five to 10 years, that's where you can restrict the payout for your kids. So my God, like he was like, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. Just, this is something that I barely never talk about, but for this client, client, that was the trigger. So I'm really happy with all the training we have at FFL and hopefully I get my $27,000 in my bank account next week. And hopefully you will uh, listen to all the video, do your phone calls, um, buy your leads, you know, like everything that everybody already said, but selling my first annuity, half a million dollars for my first one, I was pretty excited and confident because of all the video in the training. So. Thank you so much, and hopefully that was a helpful how to quickly um, attract attention for especially high-end clients. So Nadine, 949-421-7562. If you have any questions, just let me know. And thanks again, Jack, you my mentor. You are the best. You are a machine, as we say. Bye-bye. So I want to wrap this up here today. Thank you for listening. And I want to ask you a question. What is humble? What does humble mean to you? And why is it important? See, I think when we start to have success in this business, uh, we have a tendency to lose momentum. Oftentimes we lose momentum because we aren't staying humble. You got to think, like I said in the very beginning, about your long-term picture. You got to be in this game for a while, for five years, 10 years, maybe even 20 years. You got to leave a legacy. And not being humble, not having humility will get in the way. I'll give you some personal examples. Um, I still fight this all the time. The idea that uh, maybe if it's with a client that I'm sitting down with, 
uh, maybe if it's with a carrier um, or some professional in the industry where I believe strongly about something. I almost get absolute. I get the idea that I'm right and you're wrong. And when I get that polarizing effect, I'm stumbling. I'm not being humble because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm saying this is how I feel, this is what's right and everything else is wrong. And I think that's an important part of humility is make sure you're listening to people. Make sure you're not getting fed up. Uh, I'll give you another example. We work with a lot of agents, especially if you're building an agency. You work with a lot of agents and you start to get exhausted from hearing the same old excuses. Now that doesn't mean that we make the excuses a crutch and we don't allow that person to grow, but you gotta be humble. You gotta treat people with love and compassion, give them straightforward directions, give them objectives. If they fail to meet those objectives, that's on them. But if we're losing our patience, if we're getting exhausted and tired and, 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 and um, you know, losing our temper with people, that doesn't help. And it's the same thing in the field. We're in the field, in fact, I fall victim to this uh, recently, sat down with clients for an agent, was trying to help them out, and because I knew more about the numbers and the facts and what the retirement rules were, I was very impatient with the fact that they weren't picking up on it, that they didn't understand it or didn't believe me, and felt that, Listen, the commission I would make off this is nothing. I'm doing this to help someone out. I'm trying to help you. Why don't you see that? And I actually got agitated. I got irritated. I wasn't being humble. So I have to remember, this is someone's livelihood. This is 40 years of work that they put into this retirement account. To have someone come in that they don't even know, tell them what's what, and not have any patience and not want to hear them out, that's not a way to be humble. And think about how many people you sit down with every single day who you know, they, 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 we don't know what their day was like, much less their year or their life. We have to be willing to be humble, to listen to them, to give compassion and love. We still stick to our job and we give them direction. These people fill out forms, they go on to Facebook, they ask for help because they need help. You've got to come in there and be a strong personality. But being a strong personality doesn't mean you lack humility. In fact, the strongest people I've ever met are the most humble people I've ever met. So it's something I'm working on, I want you to work on it. Remember, half time, we're halfway 2019. Let's focus on being humble, keeping our head down, focusing on work, focusing on loving people, on helping people, and we're gonna make this a great 2019 and a great footstep for 2020. Thank you everyone.